Okay, everybody, it's me, Gregory Manorino. It is still Friday, January 7th, 2022. Sit down and relax, people. A lot of stuff for me to talk about. Again, I have no idea how long my videos are going to be. I, I promise you that. I kind of sit here, I hit that record button, and I just kind of go with it. I cover what I believe needs to be covered. There's a lot today, so bear with me here. So, closing bell just went off. Okay, what happened? Let's talk about the markets. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed with a fractional loss. S&P 500, same thing. The NASDAQ took the biggest hit today, but nothing dramatic. This is still rate driven on fears as to what the Fed is going to do moving forward. You and I already know. And we did hear from the Fed today, as a matter of fact, and we'll cover some more of that. So with, with that said, let's look at how other things played out. 10-year yield, relatively stable. MMRI, higher, okay? Risk in this market is rising. You know what? Hold that thought for a moment. A lot of you seem to be concerned, rightly so, that this market is about to take a hit. Okay, I got that, people. Look, markets go up and markets go down. I am not in the business of picking tops and or bottoms. Have I gotten lucky a few times and pinpointed one or two? Yeah, I have. But th those are kind of outliers, all right? With regard to the market, we should always anticipate the possibility of a normal correction, 5%. 10%, 15, maybe even 20. Always. As speculators, this is something that we deal with. We can't just be all happy and gleeful when the stock market just goes up in a straight line. We have to anticipate and realize that it's not always going to be that way because in a normal market, you get corrections. All right. With regard to a crash in the market, people, well, we're going to get one and it's going to be epic, biblical. I cover this all the time, but the biggest clue is, again, the debt market here. It's not the stock market. The stock market is a derivative as to what's happening in the lovely debt market. So the debt market is going to tell us what's about to happen. Debt being also the dollar, okay? The U.S. dollar is a unit of debt. The dollar or the relative strength of the dollar took a hit today, okay? Hold that thought. I, I want to elaborate a little further. So... Let's go back here. So 10-year yield relatively stable, MMRI rising, definitely more risk in this market. Should we be concerned? Not overly. Should we expect a possible correction? Maybe. Always. That's the way it is here. Dollar, I told you, weak. Cryptocurrencies still under pressure. Bitcoin around 42000 Gold and silver did put on slight gains today. All right, people. That's really the setup here for the market. Um... Don't get rattled by any of this stuff, because if you do, you're going to make bad decisions, people. And my job, sincerely, is to keep you on the right side of the market. So what I want to do, again, I covered a lot of things. Um, I wrote down a lot of things I would like to cover here. Uh, I already talked about the possibility of a correction. It's always there. Always there. Okay, uh, even in a low risk environment, let's say the MMRI was 50 or 60. Does that mean there's no risk? No, it means there's low risk. Right now we are in moderate risk. So yeah, the possibility is higher that we could see a normal correction. I don't try to really time these things, okay? Once you get into that business, you're going to get all kinds of screwed up, I'm telling you. So let's move on to some economic news here. So consumer borrowing continues to skyrocket, actually at its fastest pace ever. This is a phenomenon that you and I have discussed right here in this blog. I told you this would happen, that people would continue to borrow beyond their eyeballs just to attempt to maintain the illusion of a middle class lifestyle. All they're doing is assuring that they're done faster. People are addicted to debt. This nation, the world, is addicted to debt because the system is debt-based. You all know that. But these people, and I hope you're not one of them, are assuring themselves that they're going to fall to that lower rung of society. We're in the middle 
of a paradigm shift, people, uh, a demographic shift of extreme haves and extreme have-nots. Whatever's left of the middle class, well, they continue to borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. And they're done, 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 and freaking done. So what else did we find out today? New vehicle sales plunge. Imagine my surprise there. Well, prices continue to skyrocket. That's our great economy. As a matter of fact, we're going to get to more, more uh, interesting stuff with regard to the economy in just a little bit here. We also found out that homelessness, something I've covered here in this video blog, is booming, booming in this uh, grand economy. Did you hear our illustrious retard president today downplaying this abysmal job numbers? Oh, yeah. The jobs numbers, oh, well, you know, well, blah, 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 trying to talk his way around around it. No, you, there's no way out of it. Okay, it was a massive miss, a historic miss, but he can't let you know that. And he did talk about, oh, yeah, people are earning more money. Oh, really? Based against inflation, sir, retard president, uh, they, they're getting crucified. But you don't really care about that, do you? All you want the Fed to do is inflate. Tell me I'm wrong, sir. Anyway, so, you know, with... with uh, more economic news here. So Bed Bath & Beyond is shuttering more stores. We're hearing more talks about another bailout. Another bailout. I covered this just recently, I think yesterday or the day before. Uh, so our illustrious retard Congress people, our economy is so strong that they want to bail out businesses that are just not doing so well. How does that work? Maybe, maybe you want to tell me about that. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Let's move on here. So we heard from the Fed, Fed President Daly today, and she's talking about, yeah, the Federal Reserve is going to shrink its balance sheet. But you see what they're not telling you, this freak, Daly, and any of the other freaks who are talking about winding down the balance sheet is how they're going to do it. Again, would you buy debt from the Federal Reserve? Let's say you were able to do that, okay, that is yielding less than what's being currently issued. How about duh? How about duh? And absolutely not, you wouldn't do it. But they want you to believe that that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, again, deception. Uh, look here, look there. They can't make this stuff up, people. Goldman Sachs is warning, warning yet again, people. But this time, not about the market, because we've heard that before. We've heard all, pretty much, these major Wall Street banks warning us about a market crash, a market melt meltdown, never happened. Well, we got us record high, record high, record high. Remember I told you to ignore it all? Well, here we go. This is something you should pay attention to. Goldman Sachs is warning that a commodity super cycle may be among us. What are they saying? And they said it could last for a decade, that commodities could possibly surge in price moving forward. And again, it could last an entire decade. Now, what are they trying to tell you? They are trying to tell you, Wall Street Superbank, Goldman Sachs, what Greg Manorino has tried to explain to you for years, that at one particular time, we are going to get... Again, a massive risk-off environment. Cash is going to bleed, bleed out of the debt market, put pressure on the stock market, and cash is just going to move into commodities, period, the freaking end. It's going to happen. That's just the way it is. We don't need Goldman Sachs to tell us, but that's their warning here. So uh, anyway, I just thought you would uh, appreciate that. Something I've said for freaking years. It's about time. Anyway, um, I wanted to address this to people. Um, for those of you that have been with me for a long period of time, we have been buying cryptocurrencies for many, many years, um, around Bitcoin 3000. And some of us have done exceedingly well. And what am I trying to say here? We should appreciate that, um, the fact that, I mean, Let's be honest, and I sent this out in a newsletter earlier. Some of us, look, I'm not going to, I'm going to admit here that I have made a killing in crypto. Um, a lot of people have. Okay, very nice. Um, but I also wanted to bring something else to your attention. Dash, D-A-S-H. It is the only cryptocurrency I am currently underwater in. I still believe it's a long-term hold. I never said this was a trade. Okay, just like the other cryptocurrencies that we are still in. Have have you heard me tell you to sell this stuff, even though some of us have like retarded uh, profits in it? No, no. I don't have any intention of selling my crypto anytime soon. All right. I own all the big ones. I also own Dash, for which I am underwater in. But 
in the grand scheme of things, I mean, so freaking what? And um, again, going back to cryptos, we should expect a lot of volatility in 22. Our lovely, beautiful, caring members of Congress, they want to support the B system, so they are trying to pressure crypto. So I would expect to see a lot of volatility this year in 22. Uh, look, we'll keep our eye on it. I don't see a reason at all to dump any of my crypto positions, including Dash, for which, yes, I am still in the water in that one. I mean, come on now. Uh, I, I still believe they're long-term holds. And I won't change my stance on that because, again, in my view, cryptocurrencies, just like physical gold and silver, physical silver, are anti-debt units. At one point, we're going to get a debt market implosion. Listen to Goldman Sachs. They're talking about a commodity super cycle. The only way we're going to get a commodity super cycle is if this whole shit house melts down, which it's going to do. So don't listen to Greg Manorino anymore. Listen to Goldman Sachs if you want to. Anyway, let us move forward here, people. Um, going back to retail. So we're hearing from more retailers who are now stating that they are going to be slashing hours. Think about this. Before I go on, our economy is booming, right? We're doing fantastic and tremendous. Ask our illustrious retard president. He'll tell you. Um, so if we're doing so well here, why do we have retailers now saying that, um, this is, quote, they are going to be slashing hours, some of them temporarily shuttering their own stores, and some of them are even sending out apology letters to their consumers. Well, that's because we're doing great. Our economy is fantastic. You know how you know that's true? Turn on CNBC. Turn on Bloomberg, Fox Business. Oh, yeah. Our economy could not possibly be better, even though we have money velocity at its lowest point in history. Okay, we just had this epic historic jobs miss that our illustrious retard president wants you to just forget all about. Don't matter. You got to be freaking kidding me, people. I'm telling you, you got to be freaking kidding me. Anyway, um, I want to bring up one more thing before I, I end this video blog. With regard to the dollar or the relative strength, the Dixie, have any of you out here, my lions especially, noticed anything <clears throat> peculiar with regard to the dollar or the Dixie since the Fed made it very clear they're about to, you know, really take action about inflation. They're going to meaningfully raise rates. They're going to actually taper and they're going to unwind their balance sheet. What has the dollar done, the relative strength of the dollar, since the announcement? Well, how about nothing? Okay, look, I am not a currency trader, but I'm smart enough to know, and so are you, that if the currency market actually believed anything that was coming out of the mouth of the Fed, well, we would see the relative strength of the dollar get much stronger. Well, as a matter of fact, today it fell pretty damn hard. So you, do, you, do you see what I'm talking about? We have clues all over the place as to what's actually going to happen. You get it? I think you do. People, look, it is Friday. I have covered a lot of important stuff in this video. I hope you ponder it. I hope you consider the things I have said here. Um, I hope it makes sense to you. I want to hear from you. Does what I have said in this particular video, does it make sense to you? Or am I just out there? Anyway, um, what we're going to do, you and me, is, well, what we always do every Friday. Bringing it. Bringing in nobody's looking. People, we have to always remember to love each other, love each other, care about each other, and be charitable. I will see all of you on Sunday for my markets to look ahead. Tomorrow, you will hear from the Crypto Kid. I heard from him earlier today. I hope you pay attention to that. Um, that's it, people. Have, have a great rest of your day and tomorrow and i'm gonna miss you i really will and again i do want to hear from you please please a comment with what you think about what i covered here in this video is is it off base is it on target what is it because i really do care and i want to know love you a lot i'll see you sunday